Okay, so, so you can see there we've got the shell of the building starting to come together, particularly with those um, trusses there, that gives us a good idea of the roof form. Uh, and so we'll need to do the other structural elements before long. And so make sure you've had a look at the photos um, that I've added to see if you are missing any of these. And, uh, and so there you'll see those, those structural elements. But before I do that, maybe I'll look at the stairs that you have um, at the rear, which are fire stairs. And so I think these will be the only required fire stairs. You'll still have to check your travel distances, but, uh, but I'll be fairly sure they are. Just don't take my word for it, you still need to check. And um, so it's there you can see um, showing them pretty clearly in the drawing. But remember the way I've done the walls there is a little bit different to what's been drawn. So I'm going to measure each of these sides and see if it's worth changing these. So we've got 330 there, 294 and 296. Okay, so I might just make a few changes to these walls. So I'm going to uh, just see if I've got, I don't think I have a 300 existing. So I'll just uh, duplicate one of mine. I'm not going to use the generic 300 because I've already set up a few things <coughs> in this existing <coughs> wall type. So I'll duplicate that instead and just make it any thickness. And this one will be 300 as well. And I suppose just to keep things easy, I'll make this one 330. Who knows whether the drawing is accurate or not, but uh, it makes it much easier to trace off. Okay, so now I can just measure the stairs and make them fit inside those walls. Uh, so checking the width there, so that is coming up as 1051, so I can say 1050. I think it's close enough. Uh, the treads, <laughs> got 260. I think yep, that'll be close enough. And that's really all we need to know. So if I go now to, well actually, sorry, one last thing. Uh, because these lines are slightly off, I want things to be accurate when I draw them. And so I'm going to draw a reference plane. And then make sure I'm measuring that dimension from the, um, the wall inside my stairwell and make it half the width of the stair. And this is a really useful thing to do with most stairs that you make. If you set out the, uh, the center line, it'll make drawing the stair much easier. So the stair is 1050 wide. So if I make this 525, that should be in the center. Uh, and then I'll do another one here for the other centre line. So just roughly tracing that line and then again putting in my own dimension. And so then I'm going to just check that landing size. Actually, I should have checked that. Yep, probably more like 1100. 1095 is what it says. So we'll make that uh, again, new reference plane. I can select it and then one more for the start point. You don't really need one for the end point, but you should definitely have one for the, um, the first point on your stair as well. So I'll start again just by tracing the AutoCAD lines and then um, <coughs> again try and make that a round number. That's a bit of a tricky one. Uh, so in fact what I'll do there is calculate uh, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. It's too early for me to be doing maths. So I'll get calculator. Okay, so 260 times six, 1560. That's what it should be. I'm just going to select that. Again, measure from my reference plane. 
1560. And uh, so you can see all those little inaccuracies if we go to thin lines. Might not seem like much, but uh, at the end of the day, if you are working with something like a stair, which is going to give you really accurate spacings, uh, it'll throw everything out by the time you get to the next level. And so now to draw it, I might even go back to one of the other floor plan views I've got and make it there, just so I know that the AutoCAD lines won't get in the way. And then when I go to make my stair, do you know which stair tool I prefer? Definitely by sketch, yeah. So uh, for anything up to documentation stage, I, I tend to use stair by sketch when I can, just because I find it simpler, especially to edit, it's much easier. Um, but stair by component still is really useful. There are actually a lot of new features and a lot of really useful features, features for uh, documentation that you only get with stair by component. So make sure you, you do have a look at that tool, it is useful. And um, I'll just show you one other thing. It's really useful if you need to do spiral stairs. So if I'm doing a spiral stair, I'll always use this tool. Um, but for straight stairs and you know L-shaped, U-shaped, this one's U-shaped, uh, I think it's, it's actually pretty fiddly to set up and uh, it's definitely more work. So, uh, so again, just think about those things. Generally, stair by sketch is going to be a good option. So here again, once I choose stair by sketch, I'm going to change to a monolithic stair and here you'll find, uh, I'll, I'll just show you actually an edit type, that you have a few options a bit different to a, a regular stair with a stringer. So you'll see if you go down that um, the stringers are turned off here. And you've got the option there, end with riser turned off as well. And, um, and, and that's generally the way you should leave it. So I might afterwards ch uh, turn the riser on just to show you what would happen. You can have risers um, still there with a uh, monolithic stair. And you can also add a tread. So if you add a riser and a tread over the top of the stair, it'll go on top of the concrete essentially. Um, and uh, so you can see there it's got a zero tread thickness, which is the way that they um, have the riser turned, also have the tread turned off. And then um, again, the riser is uh, automatically zero because of the uh, type of stair it is. Uh, and so the other thing I want to show you when you're making monolithic stairs is that the count is always one less. Okay, so, um, and, and that's a bit of a secret with monolithic stairs. You can see that it says actual number minus one. And so, well, I'll show you what happened if I make it with the full count and then I'll come back and take one away, which is what we want here. So uh, again, I'm going to, oh yeah, and then also don't, remember, don't forget when you make your stairs, put the properties in before you make them. So I've got my stair type set. Now I'm going to set the width to 1100. And then the desired number. Oh, so also I'll, I'll put the tread depth in before I work that out. So the tread depth we know is 260. So all of the properties you know, and most of them will go into dimensions here, uh, you should definitely put those in before uh, trying to make your stair. Yeah, that's okay. So, uh, okay, so I might just switch back to the view with the drawing so that we can count the risers. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it should be 14 uh, in this, this um, pair of flights. And, uh, and you can see over there, it's worked out we need 27. So what's going on there? Let's have a look at the um, next floor plan. And you can see then that we've got um, the same drawing, but with, well, it's not really telling us much. We've got the flight coming up there. And uh, so if we have 14, uh, I don't think that's going to be enough. I think it goes... In memory, I think it's got three. So I think this drawing is actually wrong. So I think it goes one, two, and then three, maybe even four. Uh, but 
front, we'll have a look at that in a moment. So I've put these properties in, I don't want to lose them. So I'm just going to draw a quick run and put it over here. And this is also good practice just to work out how long the stair would need to be to get to the level. Now the other thing I haven't checked, you can see this is probably going to happen to you as well. Um, I haven't looked at the height. So I'm going to go and open that um, AutoCAD file. And so you can see there in the section, yeah, so we do have four flights. And uh, so there's a bit of working out to do there. I'll show you a couple of tricks. And also you can see the floor-to-floor uh, the -floor height in, well, in this one here. So we've got 4,800. And then we might have an offset height from there down to the fire stair. Right, so I'm going to go into my section view. And uh, no, okay, do you have the right height there? So, okay, so you, you might be tempted to put in a level for the, the base of the fire stair there because it does step down and we'll need to know that distance. So it steps down, well, again, inaccurate drawing, let's say 170. Oops. And then I think also at the top, steps down as well. And so there, of course, is a different distance. So it is delta y, which is minus 100. Well, you can't do that. Let's see what do I measure from the right point. Maybe from here. Oh, sorry, delta, that's better. 150, that's okay. Okay, so 100 is less than a legal step, um, but, uh, but that one's okay. So we'll say that's the top of the, um, the floor or the bottom of the door. So that's 150. And the other one, of course, was uh, a different distance. So what was it, 170? Yeah, 170. Okay, so 150 and 170, we've got to remember. And so you don't have to put a, um, a level in for those. And I actually wouldn't recommend it. It'll get in the way. So for little steps like that, uh, it's easier if you don't have a, a separate level. Uh, what I'm going to do though is make this floor deeper, so I'm going to make that 300. And then we'll need to have a separate floor for that area at the back. So I can just go edit the boundary there, remove that section, and then quickly put in a new floor. And here, uh, I could put the height offset in now, but that means every new floor I make afterwards is going to have that height until I change it. So normally what I'd do there is just make the floor at the ground floor level and um, make sure you know there, there's a bit of a trick when you're trying to flip these. Notice how it's going from the inside to the outside, but it's taking these edges with it. And that's because this line is joined to this one. If I just move that away, it should flip it without flipping the others. Oh no, okay, it's still picking up that they're joined. You can sometimes get it to flip without doing others and uh, so it's worth trying that. But if that still doesn't work, uh, instead of using pick walls, you could use pick lines or even just draw a line and put it on that edge. So it's really important that you can get the sides of your floors where you need them to be. Pick walls is great when it works, but if it doesn't work, just use one of the other options. Uh, so I'm going to finish that and then come back and change the height. Because now if I select it, I can easily just go in and make the height offset from level minus 170. And it doesn't store it in my floor creation tool, which just will make life a bit easier. And, oh yeah, so there I can attach by setting the option there to base and choose that floor to bring the walls down. And so then with the um, floor on the level above, you can go to level one. So the floor should basically finish in that line so I can make my floor for that level too. 
And so this one's even easier. I can just put a floor edge on the inside face of those walls. Again, you can see there it's trying to go to the wrong side, but this time I can flip that one on its own. But I can only get this edge by using pick lines or something like that. So that's it's going to help to have that floor to check my heights in a moment. You'll see why, particularly with monolithic stairs. Um, and so I'll say no, I don't want to attach, that's okay. And then again, I can change the height offset set there, this time to minus 150. So what I'd highly recommend doing there is putting in a section through that space to help you work out the rest of the stair. Because this one's a little bit tricky, just with those different height offsets, and you've got to do two, two sets of, um, of flights. And so there you can see we've got the, the heights we need to go from and then to. Pretty well set up. Now back to here and I'll go back and make a new stair by sketch. Uh, no, sorry, actually I'm going to go and do one more measurement just because... Uh, okay, it would be 4800 divided by 2, but we've of course got that distance. Oh, it's easy. It's, uh, it's an extra 10 mil, so it's going to be 2410. So this here, if I divide 4820 by 2, it's 2410. And uh, so that's the distance that my first flight needs to go and leave that as well. Uh, okay, so with uh, step by sketch now, I can then uh, just set the um, top offset to. Sorry, I've got to think about this. I oh know, so I'll do, I'll do it from here. So from the ground floor, it'll be minus one seventy, and then the top offset from level 1 is going to be uh, minus, what did I say, 2410 um, plus 150, so 2560. Okay, so I'm basically going half the height I need to. And if you're not sure about these things, if you've got to work them out um, on your own for, for other things that you do, uh, it can help sometimes to put reference planes in the um, section view to help you work out the heights. But after a while, you'll just be able to do it in your head. And then uh, the other properties should all still be there. So I've got there the, um, the width and the... Oh, the tread's going back to 280, so that should be 260. That's a type property, so you can... Ah, uh, yeah, so here you can see it's giving you an error. I'm just going to go edit type there. And you can see there, that's the minimum tread depth on 280. So I'll just make that 260. And maximize the height 180. I'm actually going to make that 190 um, as well. And there we are. So now I've got desired numbers on desired riser number on 13. I'm going to increase that back to 14. And now I can finally draw my first flight for the real stair, starting on the intersection there, across to the left. Oh, what did I say? Sorry, it's not 1100, so I'm just thinking out of habit. It's 1050, of course, that's what I made before. So 1050 for the width there. And so, again, I can start on that intersection. You can see that lines up perfectly. And then when I finish the flight here on this reference plane, then the treads should divide up perfectly as well. Now I can come back the other way, starting from this intersection and going to the right. And notice how it's got one too many. So that's what you should expect when you're making a monolithic stair because it considers the final stair um, tread height to be, or riser height, to be the next floor level. So it's different to a regular stair where the stair below, the last stair below your next floor is your, your final um, riser. And, and that's closer, to, this is closer to, the way to, closer to the way the stair behaves structurally but for architectural and interior design drawings, you shouldn't show it that way. Engineers may, may but, uh, but you, sh you shouldn't, you definitely shouldn't. So, so the trick is, just put the number in, so we've got 14, 
and let it do this, let it think there's going to be one more and then bring it back. So you finish on the previous one. So it'll always tell you you need one more if you're looking at the count. So if I was to go and draw um, with the run tool again, it should come up with a message somewhere. I can't even see it, but it would be there somewhere normally, uh, telling us that we need one extra riser that I don't need. With always with a monolithic stair, yeah. So concrete stairs, basically. Yeah, not not timber stairs. Yeah, not not with timber stairs or steel or stairs with a stringer, but any yeah any concrete stairs they're a bit different. Yep. So then so they're monolithic stairs basically. And uh, so maybe to make it look even more like concrete, I can go edit type, and then I might even duplicate it, and we'll call it concrete stair. And I'll put in a material, just for the monolithic material. Oh no, it is already cut. Yeah, so okay, it was already concrete anyway. But we'll just check that concrete. There we go. So it's got a cut pattern, and uh, and that's all I need. So we don't need a tread or a riser material. And I suppose while I'm at it, it doesn't hurt to check the other things. So the width there seems still slightly off. I don't know why that's happened. Oh no, it's just the line weight. Okay, so that's, that's right on the wall, even though there, so it's just a different line weight. Uh, but this edge definitely isn't right, so I'm going to use a line. And, oops, there we go, just get the wall. Okay, so I'm going to finish this now and then show you in section what that looks like. So, so we need another floor and I can easily just copy this one down and that floor needs to be uh, one riser above the stair. So I'm simply going to move that to the top of the stair and then use move again and snap to the bottom of one of my risers and then to the top of one of my risers which will move it up exactly one uh, one riser height and then just to make the join a bit easier you could just set that to be a 300 mil stair or one of the other concrete stairs but I think a 300 there wouldn't be too bad that's right I just wanted to say I sent everybody an email Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, so, class will still meet, go to the minutes, <coughs> and then you could email me your agenda and also your presentation email me that. Okay, so do not go home um, thinking that class is cancelled. I just won't be there, but I'll be contactable by email and I'll be taking um, more note on. Thanks, Okay, so um, so I just got to get the second stair in there, and. Um, Uh, it's dedication for the when you're sick. <laughs> oh well, yeah. I think most of us have had it. I've had I've had two this year already. Uh, so hopefully that was one of them. Anyhow, so uh, this shouldn't be too hard to finish now. With the um, the first stair done, the second stair should be identical. But there's a bit of a trick to getting that to copy, because if I try to copy it in section, it won't um, it won't work. Well, it will, but it's um, going to be hard for you to see how I'm doing it. So what I'll do instead is just copy it by using copy the clipboard in the plan view and then I'm going to go to paste and then align to same place. So I've got a copy of the stair on top of itself. And now all I need to do is go in and change my offset values. And so in this case it's going to be offset um, let's see, 20, uh, 2410, wasn't it, plus 150? Is it? Yeah, that's right. So 
minus, oh no, so plus 170. So, uh, oh no, minus, sorry, minus 170. Uh, is that right? Yeah. 24, 10, yeah, minus 170. So, 22, uh, 40, is that right? Ah, it won't let me because it's got some issues, but I'll just check that figure anyway. So, uh, 2410, I'm pretty sure I'm right, minus uh, 170 is, yeah, 2240. Okay, so it won't let us change that without changing the top first. So, the top offset, I'm going to make minus 150, and then, yep, click OK if we get a warning, that's fine. And then the other one is going to be 22.40. So now I'll show you in a section. That should line up pretty well, except that we've got... Um, ah, okay, so again... With the, yeah, the calculation, so this is what I was talking about with the stairs. It counts the last tread there, and it counts the, um, this one here as part of the floor. So really, uh, we should take one out. Oh yeah, no, okay, so that's fixable. All right, so we'll live with this. That's 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 definitely something you can live with, I think. Uh, it's yeah, it's going to be very complicated to change it, and I think you can easily live with it. Um, but then the top there, do you know why that's happening? Why that's gone up to the height of the floor? So think about what's happening there in properties. I've set the top offset to minus one fifty, so it's starting twenty two forty above the ground. So that's okay. Starting there. Should actually be, let's check this. So that's height offset 2374. Okay, so that's what I should be using, or let's measure it. Yeah, I'll, I just divided by two. That was actually bad maths by me. So I should have done it the simpler way, which is to measure this. So 2425. So that's actually my correct base offset. Often it's easier to, to draw something and then measure it rather than trying to do the maths. You can get into trouble if you do, like I just did. So there we are. So that's got then the first riser above the floor. Would have been okay the other way, but this is better. And then the top one, remember what I was talking about with it needing to finish one below. So I don't need to go back and modify the sketch. All I've got to do is in properties, set the desired number back to 14. It's detected that I only needed 13, and it's set it to that automatically. But if I set it to 14, then it should tell me it's got a different number drawn. That's fine. That's what I want. And it'll bring mm -hmm. this down so that it's one below. Right, so and look, it's one of those things with Revit where they've done it. They've actually done it the technically correct way. Um, this is how concrete stairs are built in real reality. But you'd be surprised how many designers um, of buildings don't actually know this until they go and work on a big um, multi-storey building and then, uh, then you know too much and you get a bit too technical. But, um, but many do. I, I did quite a few buildings before I realised that. And uh, so uh, that's why you know, it can seem a bit of a surprise when you have to do all these things just to get your concrete stairs to look the way you want it to. Um, there's a few little issues there. This here could be a problem. If you don't like that, um, that look, you can extend the riser, the set up the riser, the, the base of that stair to connect with this floor. Uh, but that involves a lot of extra modelling. And just think about really what you're going to see in 3D. You're never going to see this stair. You're not going to do a 3D view of your fire stair. So, uh, so why bother uh, modelling that in 3D? So you've got a couple of options, um, and I wouldn't worry about any of them until you fix the railing anyway. So the railing here, 
It's going to select all of those using control and change them to the 900 mil pipe at least. And we might even make them into a simpler one, but actually, so for a fire stair, again, keep it simple. Um, the outer rail doesn't need to be there. You're probably going to need the inner rail. And then it could be the pipe. I was thinking you could put a rail on the wall, but you don't need it for a fire stair. So, yeah, and so once you've got that done, then, you know, with the um, detailing tools, you can put a region in if you're really fussy about your graphics. And I would do this normally. So you could put a region in to extend that line just to make it look pretty so it doesn't look like the stairs floating. That's good practice. So to make the drawings look professional, you should at least do something like that. But a simpler way for this project may be just to go and edit the sketch of this floor, which I can do in this floor plan, and extend it under that stair and uh, I know I've done my stairs back to front anyway but uh, so that should be up there and then this one yeah so it's on this side I'll flip the stairs in a minute uh, so here you can just use pick lines and pick the edge of the stair oh that lines off anyway What's happening there oh yeah that's right wider that's all right okay so that's fine and uh, yeah the walls change we'll fix that later Okay, so that way the floor is under the stairs. And then remember I did the stairs the opposite way, which I do all the time because it's not a problem if you need to flip them. So there you've got the arrow. I can just flip that so they go up the other way. And I'll get the other stairs. Do the same thing. Okay, there we are. Right, so you could make that a bit smaller, but uh, and also actually bring that line over even more if you want to make it perfect. Uh, so then finally, we've got to check the uh, what's happening with the headroom. So we've got there 2100, just enough. And then on the next level, it should be fine. It's a fairly simple stair um, from a construction point of view, but um, but with Revit, it could be a little bit fiddly to do, so maybe just spend a bit of time with the stair tool. And uh, oh, I've still got a couple of railings there to get rid of. Oh, now, of course, okay, so it flipped, when I flipped the stair, it flipped my railing. So I'll get rid of that. And so one last thing to remember there, you can always add a railing back onto a stair, just going place one host. I'll get the pipe and we can choose that stair. Uh, that only works if you have no railings on your stairs at all. So you have to delete them all. And then um, you have to come back and delete that one again. And there we are. So I'll give you a bit of time to look at that and then we can look at the structural elements.